everyone, thank you so much for stopping by and welcome to the annual Retro Game Lounge Holiday Special Game Room and Arcade Tour. We have all kinds of great stuff to show you this year. We're going to have some special appearances from some of my friends here on YouTube. Thank you everyone uh, who contributed a video for this. This is so awesome, so humbling uh, just to bring the community together here on something like this and have everyone kind of pitch in. But uh, we're going to take you around the game room just like we do every year. We're going to transport ourselves with the Magic Snap. Hopefully it works. I guess we'll find out. Uh, down to the arcade, show you some of the newer arcade games. Uh, fire everything up and just let you, you know, feast your eyes on all this stuff that we all love as retro dorks. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get the tour started. All right, let's get this tour going here. Shut that door. I'll give you a quick pan around the room. Try to keep this camera as steady as I can. I know a lot of you guys were upset about that in the previous tours, but I will, uh, I'll do my best here. Okay, so welcome to the Retro Game Lounge Holiday Game Room Tour 2016. Thank you everyone so much for stopping by. Um, I guess we can start over here on the right side of the room. Uh, pardon the lights I have set up, just so everybody can see everything, at least as best we can. Uh, we'll start over here with definitely one of my favorite sections, the Turbo Graphics Collection, which is kind of crowing like a crowing like a totem pole here, but we got my Turbo Booster inbox there. We got my three Turbo Graphic systems, including my original one, which is right here, my original Turbo Graphic 16 from 1989. And as you can see, well, I've just kind of added some stuff to the pile. Yeah, can't have too much, right? And the uh, collection's definitely grown from the last time that you guys have seen it. Uh, got some CD games, huge chip games, uh, accessories. Got the CD case down there, all kinds of stuff, the Hudson game collection. There's my Turbo Express right there, the AC adapter, just extras of things, labels, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I don't have an exact count at the moment here, guys. I do know that I'm over 100 out of the total 138 released in the United States. So if I had to give you a guess, I'd say 104, 105, something like that. So I'm definitely getting close to the end, and it's getting basically more expensive every single time that I buy a game, you know, it kind of moves up a notch. But uh, hopefully I'll get there someday. Uh, see, not forgetting a couple of posters put up here. Just some old school stuff from Nintendo uh, Power and things that you would get inside of games that always throw you in posters and stuff. Little Smash TV, Super Double Dragon, you know, Battletoads, all that kind of stuff. Of course, that classic line that wah, 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 brought us all down. Shark 7 here, and my most favorite video game Christmas memory has to be when I got my very first NES. It was back in 1991, I was 8 years old at the time. I'll put a picture right here so you can see like how excited I was. I was super excited. I wanted it for so long. I remember my cousin Sean, he had one. I always used to always go over there and play it. And my parents knew that I always enjoyed it because when we would go to Clover, I know that's showing my age now, back in the day, I used to always play when we went to electronics. And I remember I got it and my parents were like, well, let's not hook it up now. We'll wait till after we go to your grandparents for dinner. And when we come home that night, you and your, you and your father can set it up. I was like, all right, you know, that's fine. So, of course, I get home that night and... My dad has no idea how to set it up, and oh my god, I was like, I was so upset. <laughs> it was like, oh my god, just hook it up. He ended up hooking the RF uh, adapter into the coax, into the wall. Like, why? Like, he was feeding the video signal back to the cable company. I was like, oh my god. I mean, I've, of course, I couldn't help him because I was just eight at the time. I didn't know anything. So I remember, like, the next day we called my cousin to come over and help us, because he obviously he knew, knows how to hook it up. He, I always went over there and played it, and I remember it was, like, kind of one of those weird things where, like, you ask someone for help, and then, like, you do it, and then, like, they come over and finally help you, and you can figure it out yourself. That's pretty much what happened. My dad finally figured it out, and then my cousin came over and was like, oh, I can help. I was like, oh, it's already set up. Thanks anyway. Because I know he was, like, busy with stuff and, like, he couldn't come over or whatever. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, so the, this is, uh, well, this isn't mine, but there it is. There's the action set right there. 
we almost completed the box inside. I'm missing this top styrofoam piece. I wish I still had my original, but oh my god, the camera's crooked. So yeah, so that is my uh, favorite uh, Christmas video game related memory. Um, and this is MT Shark Seven signing out. Have a good, happy holidays, everyone, and Merry Christmas. We'll go over here to the Nintendo cabinet, uh, as I like to call it, my accessory cabinet, where I've just got all kinds of stuff. You can see it's pretty much all the way up to the top there. Um, all of these things that you see here pretty much are complete in the box. I don't really have much box fodder in there. It's all kind of uh, old school complete. Uh, some of the rare items, uh, definitely the orange zapper in the box. Man, that is hard as hell to find. Uh, that took me quite a while. Got the NES Advantage, both versions, red stripe and original. All kinds of weird third-party accessories. I seem to have kind of a kind of a thing for those types of stuff uh, because the NES was such a kind of cornucopia of really weird third-party accessories like the speedboard. And I just can't seem to get enough. Um, the zipper controllers right there, a couple of my favorites. Those are actually not bad. Those are really awesome. Uh, they're licensed by Nintendo and made by a company called Bishu who made uh, all kinds of accessories and things uh, for the NES. Got the power glove down there. Zoomer, all kinds of Game Boy stuff, joysticks, wireless stuff, and we'll pan up there to the lounge sign. Put some uh, hot pink bulbs in it. I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but um, from my end, it's like it's like 80s neon pink. I, I understand that through the camera it may look a little bit whiter, uh, but from you know here in person, it's definitely like a hot pink, very very 80s stuff. My video game sign. We got some game boxes back there. My man cave clock, courtesy of mom and dad. And uh, found these at a place called Second and Charles, and they were on sale for five bucks a letter. And I found uh, an R, a G, and an L, obviously, and I just couldn't resist. Unfortunately, they don't have an AC adapter. They run on batteries, but that's fine. They don't use that much power. Uh, just little tiny bulbs in there. You can turn them on and off, but I was like, yeah, I've absolutely got to have those. It's my original Donkey Kong figure. Old school, even though it looks absolutely nothing like Donkey Kong, but that's okay. Hey, this is the Neo Turbo Maniac, and I want to share with you guys my favorite video game Christmas memory, and that came from 1991. That was the year I got my Turbo Graphics 16, and that was for my birthday in September. So from September to December, I only had two games for the system. One, of course, was the packing game Keep Courage and Alpha Zones, and the other, which I had a few days after my birthday, and that was Box Adventure. That Christmas, I got five Turbo Graphics games. From my parents, I got Box Revenge and Pac-Land. My aunt got me Alien Crush. From my uncle, he got me the Legendary Axe. And from my grandparents, the Legendary Axe 2. So five really great Turbo Graphics games along with the other two I had. So that definitely had me set for the whole winter time. And let me tell you, winter time is the best time for gaming. It's cold, you know, sometimes you don't want to be outside and, and nothing better than to sit back and play some games. So for everybody out there, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and keep on gaming. Got all kinds of stuff stacked back there. Just the Nintendo Power Binder, the Power Pad, Super Scope, you know, just things that I simply don't have room for. And then we have my lovely collection, at least I think so, of Nintendo uh, little TV video carts. Uh, these are the three, basically, that they put out. As far as I'm, as far as I know, um, there was only three models. There are a couple of, I guess you could say, variations of these two right here, depending upon the stickers, uh, because the stickers, as I understand it, were assembled by the person that bought it. So you know, you may see some that look a little bit different, but the general shape of the of the actual cart is the same. Uh, the rarest of which is the Big Daddy over here. Um, that one took me forever to find. That's by far the most valuable of the three. Um, reason I like it so much, um, you know, you got space for your NES and everything like that, and it can hold a TV on top. Hey, hey everybody, uh, which is definitely, uh, definitely an advantage. These two were basically made to hold the Nintendo itself. Uh, let's see this one, if I can get it open. Come on, open for me, there you go. You got a zapper and stuff in there, holds little accessories and uh, I got a collection of uh, game tape from uh, game players. I have the complete collection. All of the tapes, uh, most of them are sealed actually. Just got a few extra odds and ends. Nintendo related tapes like an original 
craptacular demo tape for the Super Mario Brothers movie. Nintendo 64 tapes, you know, all that kind of stuff. Some Amiibos, little extras, and got a little TV there with the Nintendo hooked up, so. So Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Um, if I have to talk about probably my favorite Christmas memory of all time, it would have to be a Christmas in 93. Now we had a tradition in our house where we would go to church that night at 11, we'd get off at midnight. And this year we had to go all the way to Rolf, Iowa, which is a little town, it's about 40 minutes away. So we had to go there, come back. It was super late at night and you know, they're like, well you can open up one gift, okay? And I was tired, I really, really wanted to go to bed that night. And just, so I picked up one gift, opened it up, and it was WWF Royal Rumble for the second Genesis, which I knew in my head, I got a second Genesis. My mom's like, she goes, turns to my stepdad and she's like, just let him open the other gift. So they give me the other gift and I got me a Sega Genesis. And this is 93, I'm like, I begged my parents so bad for having a Sega Genesis, but they wouldn't give it to me though, for good reason. I was always acting up in school. I wasn't really turning my homework on what I should. And they were just being good parents and not really kind of give me anything. Um, that year, I, I, I begged for it, but I was doing good in school. So they decided to go ahead and give me Sega Genesis. I stayed up all night playing Royal Rumble. Now, to me, Royal Rumble was the most important game at the time. I can tell you everything that was going on wrestling at the time. WCW I was getting ready for Starcade with Ric Flair versus Vader. Um, the which we call it, Survivor Series just got over with. Uh, Bret Hart and Owen Hart started their big feud. So it just I was so big into wrestling. I played that game pretty much the whole night. I just uh, went to bed, got a couple hours of sleep. But yeah, that's got to be my favorite Christmas memory for playing video games though. And, um, I really appreciate that game in particular, though. I couldn't find it. I still have. That's just one of those games I don't throw away, though. But I'd like to say Merry Christmas to everybody out there on YouTube, man, and uh, take care. There's my game room collection moving right along to, again, one of my favorite sections of the room, the Bomberman collection. Um, I have never seen anyone who's got something like this in their game room. I'm not kind of putting myself on a pedestal here, just saying, like, I've never seen anybody go so freaking crazy for Bomberman the way I have. I do know a lot of people who love Bomberman, but... Um, I haven't seen anyone take it to this level yet, but uh, I'm at Bomberman masks, all kinds of little trinkets and stuff there, little styluses for the DS. Uh, we got the Nintendo Power, the only time that Bomberman's been on the cover. The big box, of course, Super Bomberman. Bomberman PC collection, even though I'm never going to play it, but whatever, I'm a Bomberman whore. The S-Bomb Joy Card for the Sega Saturn, I mean, look at that dude, I mean, Bomberman's like built into the controller, that's so sweet. Then we got the uh, Japanese multiplayer adapter, which is basically the Japanese version of the adapter that came in here. Now, why did they get that and we didn't? I don't understand. That's such a cool adapter, man. You can hook it up and do five-player Bomberman. We got like little, little Bomberman guys and stuff down here. Uh, if any of you are wondering, um, this little kind of kiosk that you see here was actually originally made for GameStop. Um, I think to do accessories and cleaning kits and things like that. And I just saw the red and everything with it, and I was like, you know what, that would make a really cool way to display my Bomberman collection. And I just happened to have these little Nintendo shelves that you see these things sitting on. Um, I've got a crap load of those things, and I was like, you know what, I could display my Bomberman collection really perfectly that way. And uh, this is just about complete, guys. I'm really getting close to the end. I'd say about... I'm probably about 91 or 92 percent there. Um, some of the ones I'm missing, obviously, are the, the elephants in the room. Saturn Bar Man, which has just exploded in price, and uh, Second Strike uh, for the N64. Those are the big two I don't have, and I think there's one Bomberman Game Boy Color game I don't have that I'm just trying to get complete, but I'll get that at some point. And one little thing that I definitely want to show you, this was a present, actually. From my good buddy, Crazy Kyle, co-host of Dirt Flicks, he had this Bomberman pillow basically made for me. And this is basically, this is one of a kind. Um, they didn't sell this in stores or anything like that. I mean, this is basically original. This is custom made, and I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for this, Kyle. This is, like, definitely one of my favorite parts of my Bomberman collection, just because I'm the only person in the world that has one. Hey, everybody. Nintendo Hodge here. I just wanted to share a Christmas memory with you. I remember back, probably around 1988 or 89, it was six, seven-year-old Hodge, and we're opening up Christmas presents, and got to one where I ripped open the paper and took a look inside, and it was Ninja Turtle underwear. I didn't need any underwear, let alone did I want Ninja Turtles on my underwear. Toss the box aside and move on to the next present. And I get a little look from my parents laughing at me, saying, you know what, you might want to dig a little deeper in there and see what's actually inside that. So I actually removed the underwear out of the box and lo and behold there was a brand new copy of Super Mario Brothers 3 for the NES. 
I was ecstatic when I saw that. The whole jumping up and down. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for letting me, or for getting me this game. And I spent the rest of that day uh, playing that game. Thanks again for checking out my clip, guys. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. And then kind of backed away, tucked into a corner, not not telling you guys anything, not not sending you a message that I hate Sega or anything. This is basically just the only place that I had for it, um, is the Sega cabinet. So we got all kinds of Sega VHS tapes. I mean, look at that from Post. You can mail it and get it, from, get it in your cereal and stuff. You know, that was just the way things were back then. Lethal Enforcers, the Sega CD version. We got a box Genesis, one of the original boxes with Altered Beast, the big box. Dreamcast controller complete, got my little Sega sign up there. Got some Sega CD, 32X, Saturn, Genesis, Dreamcast, all kinds of accessories and things. Got some Dreamcast boxes down there, Saturn box, uh, complete box joystick, never been opened. Got a Generation 3 Sega right there, a Virtual Cop, uh, Generation 2 Genesis, all kinds of great stuff. That's a little Sega nook. I need to get a lighted Sega sign, but god damn it, those things are expensive. Hi, I'm Kevin from Happy Beard Games, and this is one of my favorite Xmas video game memories. That game is Diddy Kong Racing on the Nintendo 64. Yeah, back in 1997, I got this for Christmas. Now, this game came out in November, so I had a little bit of time before that to read about it in Nintendo Power. Kind of got hyped up as a kid, talked about it with my friends at school. I just thought this game was going to be great, and it turned out to be a really great game. I had a lot of fun with it, and I still, obviously, highly regard it as a great game. Um, it's a lot of fun, especially on multiplayer, but on that Christmas day, I actually didn't get to play it on multiplayer. I mostly played it by myself, and I played it a lot that day. That's why it was one of my biggest memories, because most of the time on Christmas, I don't spend half the day gaming, but I felt like I spent a lot of time playing this game that day. And it did live up to most of my expectations. I mean, it seemed like it was going to be like a Mario Kart, because uh, back then there was only two Mario Karts. There was Super Mario Kart and Mario Kart 64. And this game kind of improved on the Mario Kart formula because it didn't only have kart racing, it also had the planes and the hovercraft, and it also combined the Donkey Kong Country series with Diddy Kong featured in the game. It also had Conker and Banjo. Pretty cool. <laughs> And yeah, it's just a really fun game. I had a lot of fun playing it. On Christmas, it was exactly what I wanted for Christmas that year. And it was, it delivered on what I expected it to be, and then it went on to be more, because I still like it today. I didn't expect to like it this much, but uh, it's a really fun game. One of the best racing games on the N64, and I had a lot of fun with it. I have some really good memories playing it with friends later on but most of those memories started on Christmas back in 1997. And moving right along, uh, we got the PlayStation and PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Sorry, I don't have an Xbox sign yet, um, but working on it. Just kind of combine those since they're all more or less in the same general generation, put all those together. Um, as far as the signs are concerned, uh, both these are original retail signs. They're not custom made. The PlayStation 2 was uh, probably in GameStops and Toys R Us and things like that. But the PlayStation 1 sign actually has kind of a neat story behind it. I got it from a guy on Craigslist who had one of the original, the really big uh, PlayStation cabinets uh, that you would see, the big black ones, the big retail cabinets that was sort of like this, I guess you could say, just a little bit bigger, um, that they'd have in Toys R Us and game stores and things to show off the PlayStation uh, collection, uh, the, all the new games and stuff like that. And this sign was at the top of it. And he sold me the sign for a song, dude, and he let me have it for 40 bucks. So... Thanks, dude, whoever you are. That was awesome. I didn't even try and beat him up on the price. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. It's in primo freaking shape. I did ask him if he still had the cabinet. He said he sold it previously, and I was pretty upset about that. I was like, god damn it. But um, here is the PlayStation collection. Let me turn a light around so you guys can see a little bit better. I'm not going to go through every game. I'll just give you a quick whip through there. There's the PlayStation 1 collection. There's the big boxes. A couple of little extras. My only PS3 game since I don't own a PS3. PlayStation 2, we got a lot of SNK stuff, compilations, because the PlayStation 2 was like full of those things, Grand Theft Auto, uh, all kinds of good stuff, the Maximo games, so I'll show you one of my, definitely one of my favorite big box games, one of my hard to find ones, the Raiden Project, which is, if I remember correctly, it's Raiden 1 and Raiden 2 arcade version, so it's, they're both arcade perfect, 
Gotta get those, man. Those are just the freaking shit. Uh, in the hunt, this one's definitely gone up in value, which was the first game from the guy who came up with Metal Slug. So when you play that game, if it looks like Metal Slug, uh, yeah, there's a reason for that. Same brainchild behind it. And then that starts the Xbox Original Collection. We got the Buffy games, Call of Cthulhu, Capcom Classics. I try to get all the compilations when I can. Doom 3, uh, let's see, Final Fight Brotherhood of Steel, yeah. All the Halo games, of course. King of Fighters, King of Fighters Neo Wave, yeah. Metal Slug, Metal Slug 4, and I had those long before uh, they went up in value. I bought those originally. They were not easy to find, actually, even when they came out. Quick pan through here, all kinds of weird stuff. And down to the Xbox 360 collection. Don't have too many of these, man. I just kind of sold off the ones that I don't play and kept the ones that I do. Oh, there's more of them down there, but I'm not going to pull this crap out. It's just random Xbox stuff. Got a few things here in front. See my splatter house statue in the box. That piece of crap. Pump it up. See, so we got next box. We got Aliens Colonial Marines, the collector's edition, the Bioshock 2 with the vinyl, the Master Chief Halo. We got two complete in box Xboxes. My Xbox One box, Xbox 360. Yada yada yada. Hey guys, Retro Gaming Maniac here, and I was asked to share a gaming Christmas memory. And um, while I don't remember the year exactly, uh, one memory that really sticks out to me was the memory that we got the PlayStation 1, the Super Nintendo Junior, and the Nintendo 64 uh, all in one Christmas. And uh, we, were, we were a little behind on getting the systems, but um, that Christmas we got like the PS1, the 64, and the Super Nintendo Junior all brand new in box. Uh, the 64 came with the Golden Eye bundle. The uh, Super Nintendo came with I think it was Zelda and the PS1 I think we got like Tomb Raider came with that one separately but it was a great Christmas um, the only other systems I had before that were like NES and Sega Genesis so it was really cool getting those that many systems you know all at once at Christmas uh, brand new and uh, at the time GoldenEye and PS1 they were like really uh, the most popular thing and uh, I was really excited to finally get a chance to play GoldenEye at home instead of having to go to my friend's house. But anyways, uh, that was one of my gaming Christmas uh, memories that really just stands out. See ya. There's my Pip-Boy box for the Xbox One, the King's Soundtracks. And here's a little thing that complements the Turbo Collection. Um, I was able to get a hold of these kind of newsstands. I have several of them. I actually use one to display my uh, laser discs, uh, which I also collect. Come on, camera, focus. And I saw one of these, and I was like, you know what? This would be like a perfect way to display my Turbo Play collection uh, because I love collecting these Turbo Graphics magazines, and I got a few other things on here. I'll show you. Uh, don't quite have a complete Turbo Play collection, but I am getting close. Um, I do have. The majority of them, I would say, probably 55-60% of them. Um, even some of the later issues where it changed names like twice, but um, let's see some notable issues. Obviously, um, what is that, Superstar Soldier, we got the introduction to CD-ROM attachment, we got Bloody Wolf, look at that, a Bloody Wolf, yeah! <clears throat> and down here where it becomes like Turbo Force. There's the Lords of Thunder edition, along with the little demo tape that they sent you. Air Zonk. Uh, we got some books here. Oh, I got two of those. How about that? Uh, Turbo Graphics Secrets Volume 1 and 2. I need to give one of those away to somebody. The Turbo Graphics Encyclopedia. And then we got these demo tapes that were not released to the public. Uh, these were only available to retailers. I was able to get a hold of those. And then we got, let's see, we, what do we got? A Turbo Duo manual, a couple of other ads and things, inserts. Um, then we got my collection of new inbox games for the most part, all the ones you see here. Let's see, Super Spike, Final Lap, Galaga, Alien Crush, Super Sports, or Sports TV Football, rather, World Court Tennis, Power Golf. We got a couple world class baseballs over there that are complete. So that takes care of that. Hey, this is Fred from Bad Company Gaming. And I wanted to uh, share with you one of my favorite Christmas memories from when I was a kid. I had to be about five years old when I received my ColecoVision. And I remember running down the stairs, opening the package up on Christmas morning, and being very excited receiving it. I remember playing games like Cosmic Avenger, Burger Time, Mousetrap, Ladybug, 
Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Smurfs, and being very excited about playing these games. I wanted to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Oh, not to be forgetting, this little guy right here. Man, I got this basically back when I started collecting. I'm not going to show you what's in it because uh, that's where I keep the stuff for Retro Game Hall, like all my new pickups and everything. That's kind of my little chest, but my uh, original Nintendo little toy chest. It's got Zelda on there, Super Mario Brothers, all kinds of stuff. Little Zelda. I think there are two versions of this, if I remember right, because I think one of them has Super Mario Brothers 3 on it. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that there's there's a different version of this. Pretty cool. All right, let's turn the light around here so we can see. Then we got the big daddy in the room, the big case, man, the Atlantic 1080, which holds my NES collection. We got uh, three complete in-box sets up there, my little NES sign. We got the action set, orange zapper. We got the original control deck with the Nintendo Player's Guide. And we got the challenge set, red label, so that's a later release with Super Mario Brothers 3. Let's see, we got Arkanoid, complete with the Gauss controller. We got a little Simon Belmont, we got a little potted Fire Flower there, a little Mario question block. And I kind of have an odd way of organize the, organizing these. I'm not really sure where I came up with this. Um, it just, to me, I guess it just kind of made sense. Let's see if I can get the stupid camera to focus here. Um, I basically organized these by publisher and I started at the top with the original Black Box games. Uh, don't quite have that complete yet, but I'm getting close. I think it's I'm only missing like two or three games some of the harder to find ones like uh, stack up and um, Donkey Kong Jr. Math I think are one of like two that I don't have but uh, got the rest of them So basically pretty much 90% of the top shelf here is all original Nintendo stuff and From there on out. I organize it by publisher like here. We got Capcom, you can see some of the Mega Man games, Ghosts and Goblins, Little Nemo, etc. Then moves on to Data East. Then you got SNK, Tecmo, Let's see what is this, Jellico, LJN, then we got Konami. I love the Konami ones because they all have silver labels, or at least the majority of them. So it's really easy to keep them uniform. Oh, let's see, Tato. Uh, then we got what is just kind of odd things. What is this one? I don't even know. Eight eyes. What are you? Taxan. Yeah. All the word Tengen. All the really kind of oddball stuff here. Mindscape. Yeah, you know, things like that. Ultra, which is basically Konami. That's why I put it right below here. Sunsoft. Of course, the Hudson Soft collection. Uh, one of which is right there in the game. We got Bomberman 2 on the television. Let's see, so got the Lolo series, all kinds of great stuff. Double Dragon, I put all the Double Dragon games together, even though technically they're by different publishers, because uh, that one's Trade West, that one's Claim, that one's a Claim, but I was like, yeah, we got to keep the games together, so we'll make a little exception there. Milton Bradley. Hey everyone, Willie here from Arcade USA to share a special Christmas memory, a video game related Christmas memory. Back in 1976, which was a great year, you know, that's our that was our country's <clears throat> bicentennial. Yeah. A lot of good times that year. I had a really good Christmas that year as well. I got a lot of cool stuff. But one of the things I found under the tree that really made my Christmas was a Fairchild Channel F. Now this was before the Atari 2600 and I had seen this uh, just like maybe two or three weeks before Christmas. Uh, my dad, where he worked, they got some of these in to sell for the Christmas season. And I remember looking at it, playing around with it, and it's like, oh man, this thing is awesome. So my parents decided to get me one. Love that thing. I used to spend hours playing with the quadradoodle that's built into the console, <laughs> making all kinds of designs and pictures and things like that. Of course, you know, I had a built-in hockey game and built-in built tennis, you know, like the Pong consoles back then. But what was really cool about it is that you could have these interchangeable cartridges, which wasn't seen up until then. And I remember getting a hold of, what was cartridge was that? It was number... 
I got blackjack, because my dad liked blackjack, so that was one of the cartridges I got with it. But I also got oh, the Spitfire game with the two airplanes flying around. Oh man, that was incredible to play on Christmas Day with my, my parents. I had a lot of fun with that. But you know, that's a really special Christmas memory. One of my first game consoles I ever got. I still have the Fairchild Channel F. Uh, it's one of my favorites uh, still to this day. Uh, I love the Atari 2600 too, but you know, the Fairchild has a special place in my heart because that was given to me on Christmas, so it made it really special. So anyway, thanks for uh, looking at my video, and, and Jimbo, you have a really Merry Christmas too, buddy. All kinds of, this is where it gets kind of in the oddball section. You know, all the kind of random stuff where they didn't put out that many. Uh, then we got my little trinkets here, got my little Bowser and Mario. And we got some of the bootleg games, you know, the gold and weird black cartridges, the tanging cartridges there. A little question in black. And we got my uh, complete box games. I got a lot of the black box ones, as you can see. I absolutely love those. And cleaning kits. They're kind of a thing I have a kind of a fetish for, I guess. I love collecting those things for all the original Nintendo systems. Just for Nintendo, though. Got a lot of Nintendo stuff box. We got some Capcom over there, and we got a crap load of Konami games, man, including the, the big box uh, Carmen San Diego. Not to forget Chiller, complete in box, probably my rarest NES game. Yeah, we got Contra, Goonies 2, all three Castlevania games, Life Force, Stinger, Bayou Billy, all kinds of great stuff. Werewolf, love that one, Bad Dudes. Some Jolly Co games. Love Bases Loaded, man. Definitely one of my favorite baseball games. Just because it's so easy to play. I guess that's why I liked it so much. A bunch of the Ultra games. Very cool. Hey there, guys. This is Console Kev from the channel Console Kev. And my favorite video game semi related Christmas memory actually happened last year. And I have to remind you uh, that this really doesn't have to do with like the video game stuff itself. It's more about what happened around it. But just hear me out. The only thing really tying this related is a PlayStation 4, but we'll get there. So, on Christmas last year, I knew I was getting PlayStation 4. And I was told that, nope, it's the last thing you got to open. Go through all your other stuff first. Not a problem with me. Rewind. My dad used to be a police officer. Luckily, he's happily retired with no issues. Everything's good. And for Christmas, my mom wanted a very expensive perfume. And being the jokester that he is, he was like, Ooh, I'm going to do something funny. So, on one of his last shifts, there's a town right beside us, a little sketchier than most, that is... Uh, it's got a couple 24-hour pawn shops. So he went around asking, like, do you have an empty perfume bottle? Do you have an empty perfume bottle? Um, and, you know, eventually he found one. The next day, he also went to a Bass Pro Shop, where he got a little bottle of uh, deer urine. Mm, so, as I'm finally opening up my last bunch of gifts, my mom's going through her stuff. And she gets her perfume, and she's excited. She's like, oh my god, thank you, of course I wanted this. And my dad's turned beet red, like, open it. I don't want to smell mom's perfume right now. Open it. I'll, I'll go ahead and open it there. And I'm sitting there, and she's like looking at it, just examining it. She's in love with the thing. And I get to finally open my PS4. My brother's got me some PS4. So, finally, I get to open my PS4, and I start smelling something and I look up and my mom's face is just and my brother's faces are laughing all hysterical and I start laughing I'm like what the fuck is that smell and she just it smells like piss my dad took my mom's whole little expensive perfume that she wanted and replaced it with a bottle of hunting deer piss so now I forever relate my PlayStation 4 to the smell of hunting deer piss. Weirdest Christmas memory ever, am I right? I can't watch it from my mind. Jemmo, thank you for having me on Retro Game Lounge. I'm sorry, my memory is probably not so much about the video game memory as everyone else's, but I'm looking at my PlayStation 4 right there and I'm just like, that was one hell of a smelly morning. 
See you guys later. Have a Merry Christmas. Okay, next cabinet. Uh, we got kind of an amalgam of stuff in here. Uh, we Obviously by the signs we got GameCube and N64, but we've also got some kind of overflow NES boxes um, across the first couple rows here. Actually the first almost three rows. Just kind of, uh, there's the Hudson collection right there. Yeah, I don't have a Barman 2 box yet. I'm working on that. That's a pretty damn expensive box. Got some SNK. Low G man, love that. My man Bill Benton. I know he loves that one. Good game. So you smash TV, Tiger Heli, got a little Tiger Heli. Some RBI Baseball, Overlord, Dizzy, Abadox. And we got some Super Nintendo games, Final Fight, New Beavis and Butthead. So you got Riding Trad right there. Uh, what do we got? Uh, what are these game preservers? Yeah, for the Game Boy. Diddy Kong Racing, we got some N64 boxes, more cleaning kits, told you I freaking love those things, Super Art Type, got a Ghoul Patrol box over there, it's probably my rarest box, I don't actually own the game yet, I have the box and the manual, but I don't have the game, working on it, Zombies at my neighbor, Super, or Saturday Night Slam Masters, man, if you have never played this freaking game, you have got to get it, it's basically Final Fight in a wrestling ring, made by Capcom which is awesome and Hagar is actually one of the wrestlers so if you've never played that game grab it it's so much fun it's not that expensive and we got the Game Boy collection which is small I kind of kept that small because I didn't have many of those originally we got the Wii collection which is amazing for compilations you absolutely have to get if nothing else get a Wii or a Wii U just for the compilations I mean SNK Metal Slug Samurai Showdown, The King of Fighters, The Deities Collection. I mean, there's so many great compilations on this system, guys, that are just arcade perfect and absolutely awesome. Got the N64 games down there. I don't have labels for them yet, but I'm working on those. We got some DS games, Game Boy Color, Wii U, little Mario. Then we got my little Wii stand here, which is kind of cool because, uh, let me turn it on. Which is kind of cool, kind of lights up. Whoa, camera freaking out about that one. Camera didn't like that one. Which is cool because it kind of looks like a Wii. Let me pull it out a little bit here so you can see it. If you look at the shape, it's basically shaped like a Wii. I saw that and I was like, wow, that's super awesome. We got my uh, limited edition Wii modes here. We got Zelda, Mario, Luigi, a random blue one. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Aaron Strange from uh, Aaron Strange. No, I'm Aaron Strange from uh, the Boston area, Boston slash New England area, wherever the fuck. Uh, I'm a good friend of Jimbo's from uh, Retro Game Lounge, who's invited me to uh, try to make the shortest Christmas memory story video game related ever. And I ramble all the fucking time, so... Uh, yeah, thanks Jimbo, here we go, right for the uh, memory. Uh, wow, I'm gonna cut right to the point. So, back in, I think it was the mid to late 90s for Christmas one year, uh, it was when my stepdad first started staying with me and my family. And I asked for a couple of games for Christmas that were out at the time. I know one of them was Twisted Metal 2, which who doesn't love fucking Twisted Metal? First two of the best in Twisted Metal Black for PS2. So uh, he got me Twisted Metal 2, which I played all day. Uh, Jet Moto, the first one, uh, both single track. Single track, the company that made Twisted Metal games. And then uh, single track left Sony for a couple of years and they came out with another game. So, like I said, I. Twist of Metal 2, still have it, same copy. Jet Moto 1, game's fucked. The chicks in this have the nicest asses and tits. Great game, hard as fuck. I love Jet Moto. Uh, so anyway, those two. Played these games all day with my uh, brother and my sister. It was a great Christmas morning. Then for some reason, my brother was like, Oh, you forgot to check your stocking. So I'm looking through my stocking. It's probably like 6, 7, or 8 o'clock at night. Christmas, Christmas day, Christmas night at this point. I reach into my stocking, I'm like, what the hell, was there a CD in here? I didn't ask for any music CDs. I don't want to listen to that devil's music. No, I really do. I worship Satan. Uh, so anyway, at the bottom of the stocking was a game I had never heard of called Rogue Trip. Made by Singletrack, after they left Sony. Uh, if you played this, it's pretty much like Twisted Metal, but you go all over the world and you grab tourists and bring them to hills, like King of the Hill. But uh, all the characters are fucked. It's uh, like a hot dog with a Jason mask car and fucking an Elvis impersonator. I, I don't know. 
Anyway, the game's fun. You go all the way to Area 51. Me and my brother and sister played this probably for the rest of the night on Christmas Day. Christmas night again. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, one of the best Christmas uh, video game memories I can think of at the moment. Uh, there's a lot more, but this is probably uh, the most predominant. I don't know why. Predominant. That's a word, right? Dominant? Predominant? I don't know. Whatever. So, yeah. There you go. Aaron Strange remembers getting... Da, what the fuck is that game called? Rogue Trip for PS1 for Christmas. Aaron Strange. Christmas memories. Yeah. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Jimbo... I got nothing. I gotta go park my car at Harvard Yard. Do you like my outfit? It's fucking cold in here. See ya later. Oh, and uh, Merry whatever the fuck you celebrate. See you later, guys. Okay, then we got uh, a couple box systems. We got a Super Nintendo. We got N64. Got uh, some big box uh, Super NES stuff. I recently got the last piece of that uh, recently, which you will see in Retro Game Hall shortly. Uh, let's see, it's not complete, but we have a uh, Generation 2 Super Nintendo. Got the control set back there. Got my Nintendo Super System sign. Wow, look at that dude. Whew. So into Nintendo, he had to put it on his face. And then we got the Super NES collection, which is small, but I don't have a lot of filler here, guys. I got a lot of the original Nintendo stuff and a lot of really good games because there were so many good beat em ups. A lot of shooters, the Star Wars games, a lot of good adventure games, SNK games, all kinds of great stuff like Phalanx right there. Freaking awesome shooter. Recommended by my buddy Kevin. Thanks for that, Kevin. It's good stuff. Super Smash Bros. Wii U. A couple random Game Boy games down there. So, one of my favorite holiday video gaming memories it definitely has to be the one, other than the ones I've talked about previously on the channel, one that definitely sticks out is this one time, uh, this was definitely during the Super Nintendo era, where basically every year I would just tell my parents what games I wanted because video games were, were the main kind of crux of what I got, you know, present-wise for Christmas. And just gave my mom a list and they just went out and got them. And I remember one particular year, uh, one of the games on my list was Captain America and the Avengers because I played it in the arcade and absolutely loved it. And, you know, it's just such a fun you know, beat em up kind of game. You know, that and the X-Men game were just absolutely amazing. And during that time, you know, when I, after I gave my mom the list, I was actually able to rent the game and I saw how bad the port was. Just, just my two cents, if you like it, that's fine. But I was just like, wow, this is freaking garbage. It just wasn't, it wasn't close enough to the arcade for me. I was like, yeah, I don't like this. And I told my mom that, I was like, yeah, can you take that off my list? I really don't want it. And she was like, oh, you don't want it? Oh. Okay, and then I couldn't help but notice like less than, I don't know, two or three days later that one of my big gifts that was previously under the tree had been rewrapped on the bottom. There was like, there was two different types of wrapping paper on it. Like there was one on the top that matched all the rest and the wrapping paper on the bottom was completely different. And I was like, even as a kid, you know, 10, 11 years old, you know, 12 years old, I was able to figure it out. Like, yeah, she got me that game and yeah, she obviously returned it and got me something else. I was just kind of laughing inside. It's like, well, no, I'm not getting stuck with that one. So thanks, Mom. Okay, and then uh, this is basically what it looks like, guys, when you do a lot of live streaming. There's a lot of cables and crap all over the place. So if you're thinking about getting into that, basically accept that this is what it's going to look like. This is actually the cleaned up version of it, but this is just the way it works. Got to hook everything up. So, um, if any of you are wondering what it looks like from my perspective when I am live streaming, this is basically here. I'll sit down on the couch so you can see. This is basically what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the game over there, and I'm looking at you guys chatting over there. Got my Contra background over there. Little Bomberman 2. And my little miniature repro system. My favorite Christmas memory? Of course, what else? Christmas 1996. When I asked my parents for the Nintendo 64, I seen it on TV, I seen it everywhere. I wanted this thing. I can still remember it just like yesterday. Going downstairs for Christmas Day, opening up the N64, and that thing was just a beauty to me. I still have it, and I still play it to this day. Uh, Mario 64 and Mario Kart, when I got with it, I remember playing that all day on Christmas morning, and that was probably one of the best memories I'll ever have. And it will be with me as long as I live. 
Got the Konami Multicade, which I do not have on right now, simply because it's so damn noisy, you wouldn't be able to hear me talking. So I figured I'd leave that off. And there's, there was really no way to turn the sound down, which is really fucking annoying. I need to hack that thing and figure it out. But got the Killian sign on top. Got the mini fridge down there so you can get yourself a cold beverage. Then we got the console little display here. We got this absolute piece of fucking shit known as the Retron 5, which broke and don't give a fuck about that because it's a piece of crap. The Sega Genesis kind of Aphex twin monster with the CD and the 32X and yeah, the monstrosity with all its three power supplies, which is absolutely absurd. Got the Nintendo, let's see the original NES, Super NES, got the Turbo Graphics, Turbo, whoa, almost dropped that controller, Turbo Duo, Sega Saturn, N64, GameCube, Dreamcast, and we got a little drawer right there with just cables and stuff, but you guys don't care about that. There's the retro couch. And I'll give you a quick pan around here from the corner. Okay, so that's basically the game room. Now, I'll do this every year. Hopefully I've still got a little, little bit of magic here left, left uh, in the snap of the fingers. I guess we're gonna find out. And uh, we will continue this downstairs in the arcade. Let's see if we can get it to work. Let's go to the arcade now. Whew, man, that was a close one. There we go. Okay, so we're downstairs here in the arcade. Let me give you guys a quick tour. A little pan around here so you can see everything first before I go into detail on the games. Okay, so let's start over here in the corner. Got my Kagi Kai. Probably, probably my rarest of all my arcade games. I've never seen another one of these. Um, I wanted to get one of these basically since I was so oh, 10 years old and I went to see Bill and Ted, his excellent adventure, the first one in the movie theater. And me and a friend of mine, quote, uh, snuck out to go to the bathroom and went to the lobby where they had some arcade games in the movie theater and Kagi Kai was there and I was absolutely fucking amazed. Very, very simple game, just kind of round-based tournament fighter. It's like a boxing game, but very, very hard. And my buddy Crazy Kyle was fucking amazing at it for some reason. And over here, we got my change machine. Yes, it does work. Um, we are going to set this up basically to automatically dispense tokens. Uh, when you pull this little lever right here, it'll shoot out some tokens for you so you can play some games. And we got Golden Axe, Revenge of Death Adder. One of my buddy Aaron Strange, a huge fan of this game, four-player. Definitely my nicest cabinet by far because it's been professionally refurbished by the previous owner. Control board and everything looks new. I know you can't see it, but the side art back there looks amazing. Nice clean marquee. The monitor could use a little bit of adjust, you know, a little bit of rework, probably uh, reca uh, recapping the uh, capacitors. But overall, it looks good, plays good. It's really fun to play with four players. Grab three of your friends. Got my arcade sign up there. And then we got the whole room is basically lined with these LED strips that you can connect together. Um, these will actually turn one of like, I don't know, like 30 different colors or whatever, but I figured, you know, what's more 80s than neon pink? I thought that was a cool little extra touch. Looks really good with the lights off. And we got Time Soldiers over here in a gyrus cabinet with a uh, pretty cool game, two player kind of run and gun shooter, but um, the really neat thing about this is the joysticks. You know, the normal eight way stuff, but they also rotate. So you can turn your guy kind of like a tank. This is basically what they came up with before they came up with using two joysticks. Now I know we kind of take that for granted nowadays with Xbox 360 and PlayStation, but that was what they had back then, ladies and gents. Really cool, really fun game. Really hard too, man. You die really easy in that game. And we got RoboCop over here, original Data East cabinet. We got a flat screen in that one. I know it's all you purists, that's a big groan, but hey. I didn't know any better at the time, now I know better. Stick with CRT, it's all good, but it plays fine. Picture looks amazing on this thing. Look at that nice, clear picture. Awesome, looks good. Nice, clean cabinet, only cost me 100 bucks. Can't beat that. And then we got one of my two little TVs uh, that I've got mounted here in the corner. That one's playing uh, Zelda and Mario cartoons. And this one plays 80s music videos. What do we got over there, Warrant? Live in concert. Yeah, my man Janie Lane. Awesome. 
We'll continue right along with the tour. I know this is one that a lot of you talk about and a lot of you want to see, and every time I get somebody over here who's never been in my arcade, this is the one that they're drooling over, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles four-player original arcade cabinet. Looking good. Does need a little bit of work. It's having a minor sound issue right now. We're going to have to have to send the board out to get it rectified, but that's okay. We'll get it fixed. These things can be fixed. Just got to get over to the right person. Oh, damn, I forgot to turn this one on. Solar Warriors. You know, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to, I'm going to say this is just as rare as my Kage Kai cabinet. Dude, look at this gold team molding on this thing. Tell me that's not fucking pimp. 24 karat arcade cabinet right there. Needs a little bit of board work, but it's definitely a cool game, man. A little space shooter, a little run and gun. Kind of a neat little game. We got Silkworm, man. Man, this is fun to play with two players. Hard as fuck, though. I mean, really hard because when you get to the last level, it shuts off the continue system, meaning if you fail, that's the end of it. You cannot continue again on the last level. So you've got to beat the final level in one run, meaning one set of lives. That's all you get. That's really cool, man. You play with a little Jeep that can jump and your buddy's in the chopper. So you got one guy on the turf, one guy in the air. Little side-scrolling shooter. Then we got Operation Wolf. This basically, ladies and gentlemen, is my answer to people who say, dude, why do you have those when you can just do ROMs, man? You can use emulators. Try and emulate this. You cannot do this on a fucking computer or a phone or something stupid like that. Sorry, guys. I don't, I don't mean to hate on all, all you guys who like ROMs. That's fine, man. But I mean, the, the whole thing that this, you know, doing stuff like this is a waste of money, whatever, man. That's like saying that video pinball is the same thing as playing regular pinball. It is not the same thing. Sorry for the little mini rant right there. It just pisses me off anytime I hear that. It's, it's not the same thing as standing in front of this cabinet, you know, grabbing a hold of the gun, feeling the recoil and stuff when the game fires up. You know, seeing the draw range and everything looks like you're firing down range. It's just not the same thing. Okay, end rant on the emulators. Sorry about that. Let's see, what do we got? Tato Double Axle. This is a really fun game. Kind of a monster truck. You know, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We're going to go outside and crush some fucking cars and run some people over and you might actually die going to see this event. Old school, man. Absolutely love it. One of the few arcade driving games I've ever seen that has reverse. That's really unusual, actually. Really pretty looking cabinet, though. I know you can't see the side art, but this thing's in amazing shape. There's a nice little free play button on the front. Then we got Black Tiger, man. More or less the prequel to Magic Sword. More or less. Kind of like the, the prequel side pull. Uh, the previous owner actually saw fit to install a flat tube in it. It is not an LCD. It is a CRT. It's just a modern tube. I guess he cannibalized a, a, tel a tube television from the early 21st century. That's why the picture looks so amazing. You know, all those dark blacks and everything. I mean, look at that. Really fun game to play, really hard. Kind of an action platformer. Um, the uh, little demon thing from Ghosts and Goblins makes an appearance since it is a Capcom game. I know it says Romstar up there, but if you look real close. Can't focus, camera. There we go. Capcom USA. So it's right when Capcom was starting out. Then we got Konami Aliens. Man, does this one get a lot of play anytime I have friends over. Really fun to play with two people. You play as um, Hicks and Ripley. Just cutting through aliens and shit. Let me see if I can get you a little gameplay here. Come on, aliens. Fire up for me. Here we go. All right. Yeah, the, some of the stages change where you got like overhead shooter, then you got side scrolling. Really fun game. Then we have my Neo Geo, which is not featuring one car. We got 161 Neo Geo games in this bad motherfucker. It's awesome, man. We got all the King of Fighters, all the Metal Slugs, all the Samurai Showdown, all of that shit that you can handle, all right here. Super cool, man. I've always wanted to have one of these. This is one of the latest additions to the arcade. So happy to have this, man. We're, we're definitely going to rock out here come June, for those of you in the know. Oh yeah, this, this, that's going to be on the agenda. Then we got my POW, Prisoners of War Cabinet. Really fun SNK two-player game. A little fun little beat-em-up, a little bit of shooting and stuff. Really fun to play with two players. Nice looking cabinet, too. This one you can see the side art on. Because it's sticking on the end. Look at that, man. They just don't do this stuff anymore. Nice kind of vivid side art, almost like a movie poster. So, I'll go to the other end of the room and I'll give you guys a quick pan around. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. 
The arcade tour, there's more coming. I got a bunch of cabinets in the garage that are being worked on. So if you see one that was missing from a previous video, it's probably still with me. It's just being serviced, you know, we got it apart and everything. And you know, we gotta work on these things. There's gonna be more. So don't you worry. This is just the tip of the iceberg, I can assure you. So that about wraps up this year. Man, 2016, what a great year for retro game loans. A lot of a lot of interesting things happened. Uh, you know, kind of got uprooted, you know, from my living space at the last uh, Retro Game Lounge very suddenly and had to move, but, you know, it was kind of a blessing in disguise because, you know, I moved into this uh, much larger pile of bricks. I basically gained 600 square feet, which is definitely a plus when you like to do things like this. You know, more space is definitely better. Um, got a dedicated arcade room, you know, downstairs. Didn't have games upstairs and down anymore. Just got a kind of a solo room for it, and uh, the lounge is bigger. You know, you can't really complain about that. You know, more space is definitely good, but at the same time, you just look around and you're like, how did I fit all this in the previous room? You know, I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> because I, I don't really have all that much more furniture and everything in here. It's just like, wow. You know, I guess you just don't think about those things. But uh, very special thanks to all my friends on YouTube. I've got links to their channels down there in the description box who contributed to video. You guys freaking rock. Thank you so much. Uh, for coming together and helping me out uh, with this uh, annual RGL uh, gaming tour that I do. It's been a lot of fun. Love doing these for you guys. We will be back next year in 2017 for the annual holiday special and tour, so don't worry about that. Hopefully we'll have a bunch new stuff to show you because everything's on the up and up, so stay tuned on that. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, very happy holidays, whatever it is you celebrate. Celebrate it well, man. Drink a few, eat a lot of food, have a good time, spend time with friends and family. And just game on. I don't know what else to say other than that. But uh, I will see you guys, I guess, in uh, in 2017, you know, for the next annual tour. So thanks. <laughs>